1300cc V twin. So much power. Hey, like that, you see. And you just got that grunt. Bye bye. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to one of my all time favourite naked motorcycles. Now I have owned a Super Duke before. I've owned a Gen 1 Super Duke which I threw everything at it, carbon wheels, suspension done, lots of money spent on it. But I ended up selling that bike because it was never smooth enough in town and low speed manners started to grate on me a little bit. Then they brought out the Gen 2 which was much improved from a manners point of view, but the highlight of the bike was still the engine. The chassis was never quite good enough for that engine. And then KTM brought out the Gen 3, which is what we have here, with finally a chassis which is as good, or almost as good, as the engine. And this is a fantastic motorcycle. This is actually the fourth time I've borrowed one of these bikes. Which tells you something, doesn't it? This, t this tells me that really I should have one of these in my garage <laughs> because I absolutely love a Super Duke. I really miss my Gen 1 and the Gen 3 to me is like the complete package. So in this video, I'm going to let you know if this bike is as good as I remember it. You know, I've ridden these other modern, the new Street Fighter, the new M1000R. How does the Super Duke stack up against those bikes? It was for me the daddy. Is it still the daddy? So if that sounds of interest, you know what you've got to do. Grab yourself a cup of tea and Chopsy, roll the intro. So let us jump aboard on the Orange Beastie. Now, some little features about this bike before we start, get on it. Remote preload adjuster, so you can actually adjust the preload on the rear shock. Being a fatty, I've uh, wound that up already. Also on the forks on the Super Duke, you actually have some compression, um, some preload, sorry. You have rebound, compression damping, but on the Super Duke, you also have three different settings for preload. And it, it, Super Duke's one of the few KTMs where you actually get preload adjustment on the forks. One of the few road bikes. So a couple of little things. The bike's also keyless, so you've got none of that key business. And this one has, as it's a press machine, the full packs enabled. So I've got this running in the performance pack, which means you can have the wheelie control off, adjust it up and down on these little buttons here and then you know just just slip and all of that good stuff so uh, this one is fully loaded jumping aboard it's actually quite a tall bike with all that preload round round in the rear i mean i can i can only just flat foot it i'm sort of just just about flat foot it and i'm six foot two um, I don't know what my inseam is. I've got quite short legs actually. I've got a long body and short legs. The bars are wide and what I love about the Super Duke is this riding position where your feet are sort of back, you've got a weight over the front, you know, it's an aggressive, it's an aggressive bike but it's also got quite an aggressive riding position. Let's fire it up. Oh, listen to that. There's a reason why KTM called this the beast. You know, it is an absolute hooligan bike. I mean, I think it's 140 Newton meters of torque. 140! And I think about 170 horsepower-ish, might be 180, about 175, something like that. 1300cc, V-twin. And uh, yeah, it's, it's an absolute weapon, this bike. And what I love about it, what I've always loved about it, is the riding position, just the way you sort of forward over the front a little bit. It's what this bike was always missing in its sort of the Gen 1 and Gen 2. It never had that handling to actually match the performance. So it was almost a bit like a big muscle, American muscle car, where it had the power, but not the finesse to handle that power. You know, since the update, it's got the finesse as well. So much grunt, so much power, 
<laughs> the brakes are also fantastic. Calm it down. This is one of the bloody reasons I don't own one of these. <laughs> because it's a lunatic bike. It absolutely brings out your hooligan side. You know, it's one of those machines where the, the hooliganistic sort of really need not apply because it is <laughs> a monster. Grunt, you know, wind it open in third gear, it just pulls on the blipper. You know, the balance of the bike is beautiful. You know, it just lifts the front up over every crest. It's just, you know, the, the, the feedback and the fun and the smiles per mile on this machine, I think, is, is unparalleled. One of the fantastic things with this bike, I think the thing which is almost as impressive as the performance is how tamed this engine is at lower revs. What, what annoyed me about my Gen 1 was the fact that anything below 3,000 revs was unusable. You know, unusable, it would rattle, it would shake. You know, it's, it's a riding through town became a real uncomfortable experience. But on this new version, where they've added, I think, balancing shafts, anything above 2,000, well, 2,500 upwards, it's perfectly smooth, perfectly usable. I mean, the days of massive V-twins being, you know, shaking your fillings out, has completely gone. And this is so nice to ride at lower, throttles now and you just got that grunt bye bye and what's so great about the super duke and the way it makes its power is that it's all in the first sort of half turn of the throttle you know the uh, any straight four the tuono the street fighter you know they no other bike you can buy has the power on the initial sort of quarter turn of the throttle that the super duke does you know everything is there right at your fingertips so what that means is when you're riding along the road and you get a bit of a crest just the slightest provocation on the throttle and the front's coming up and you're you know the front's coming up over the crests and stuff there's not another bike which has that instant power and punch i mean yes that runs out you know the tuono's stronger in the mid-range the street fighter's stronger at the top you know, even the Toronto stronger at the top, but the Super Duke's just got that initial power on the throttle as soon as you turn the grip. And I think that's what makes it such a good road bike because you don't have to be thrashing it to be appreciating its best quality. You know, you've got that best quality immediately without having to thrash it, without having to do three figures until you get to that fun. And that is what I love about this engine and this bike. And in this chassis, like this, look. <laughs> that was a bit, of a, that was more than a crest. That was a full on job. Hey, like that, you see? Just a little bit of that. It's just so good and it's so planted. You get so much feedback from that suspension. I know they've got the Evo version of this now, but I honestly don't think you need the Evo. I think the standard version does everything I want it to do. It's pretty compliant, it's not too crashy. I mean, I really do rate this WP suspension. I mean, we mentioned this in our review we did on the 890R versus the uh, Street Triple. We mentioned on the 890R how good this WP suspension is, and it's the same on this bike. It's so good in standard form I honestly don't think I'd bother spending the extra 1500 quid and buying the Evo version of this bike. It doesn't crash, it's got loads of support, it's got the performance. My advice, save your money, get the base version. Oh, blimey, so yeah, I quite like this. <laughs> this is the fourth time I've bought one of these, as I've said. And it's, it's as good as I remember it, you know. Oh. Why I don't own one of these in my garage, I, I can't answer that. I don't know why I've never bought one of these. Because I should have one of these bikes and I've been thinking more and more about actually potentially buying one because I quite fancy one as a, as a do-it-all machine. Track days, road riding. I think you could make this into an absolute weapon. In my old one, I had the, the Rottweiler airbox, I had the Power Commander, you know, it sorted out a lot of the, the fueling issues, but I think on this one with those same mods, 
the power you'd have, that the wheelies off the throttle, it's crazy anyway, but it would be insane. And then KTM do all the, uh, you know, the really decent racing WP suspension. If I bought the standard one, I'd be tempted to kit it up, you know, make it a proper, decent track machine as well. I've been following a channel called uh, Super Duked, and he races a Super Duke, funny enough, and he's done some chassis mods. You know, he really rates it as a race bike. One thing he's recommending is a gearing change, because these are stupidly high geared. It's fine in town on the road, but you get on the motorway and it's like 70 miles an hour. The, the bike's bogging in sixth gear at 70 because it's so tall geared. So he recommends re-gearing, adding like four teeth to the rear, which I could actually see that being quite a good idea. I mean, what that would do to the first, second and third on the road. <laughs> I mean, it's already a bit lively at the front with four additional teeth at the rear. <laughs> I think you literally would struggle to get the front wheel down, but it'll be fun, won't it? So yeah, I, I'm, I'm quite tempted and what's tempting me even more is KTM are now offering £3,000 off one of these, off, off this version and the Evo. They're offering £3,000 off with your part exchange. So I think this is £16,999. Now it's got three grand off. And not only have they knocked £3,000 off the price of this, they've also chucking in four years warranty. Four years warranty! And that's across the Evo and this version, the standard version. So, now if you're thinking of a Super Duke, there's never been a better time to buy one. I think the reason they're doing that is, I think there's going to be an update next year. There's, I think there's a few of these hanging around on the KTM network, and I think there's a new one or an update coming next year for this bike. So, I mean, I don't know, I've not heard officially that that's happening, but you just got to read in between the lines, you know, and they're knocking three grand off it. They're trying to clear some stock, you know. It's pointing that there, there, there could potentially be a new one on the way. <laughs> so, <laughs> this one's bloody good. I mean, if the new one comes out, the new one's probably going to be what? 18 and a half, 19. It's probably not going to be two versions, I wouldn't have thought. I think they'll just do one version with electronic suspension. So it's probably going to be 19 ish, 19,000. Whereas you can get this for 14,000. You know, and, and I've really got no niggles with this bike. The fueling is beautiful. The quick shifter, well, the, the blipper can be a little bit a little bit clunky on the downshift sometimes. I mean, even the vibrations through the bars and the bike, you can feel a little bit of vibes, but they're not. It's not. It's not uncomfortable. You know, it, it's it's a, it's a 1300 CV twin. You, you're going to have some vibrations, but. They're, they are really characterful, you know, they're not at all intrusive. You, you don't get any buzzing hands, you know. You, you just get that sort of feeling, that throbbing. I'm going to call it throbbing through your crutch. <laughs> so, it's not unpleasant. Ah, oh, this bike, this bike. Why isn't it in my garage? The riding position on this, as I, as I mentioned, it's, it's an aggressive riding position, but it's not as aggressive as the M1000R. You know, I always thought this was quite an aggressive bike, but the riding position is nowhere near as aggressive as the M1000R with its flat bars. I would actually like a little bit more weight on the front of this now, so it's a little bit more like the M. But it's, it's, it's a good, you know, it's much more aggressive than the, uh, the MT10, you know, the... Uh, the Street Fighter, the Street Fighter is a very upright bike. This is an aggressive machine, but not as aggressive as the M1000R. That is still the most aggressive naked motorcycle you can buy. It comes laden with extras. As I say, this is in the performance mode where you can adjust the slip and have the wheelie control off, choose what throttle map you want. It's also got cruise control and you can adjust the cruise control on these big buttons here as well. All the switch gears illuminated. You've got shortcut buttons here where you can set these to what you want them to do. You know, it, it's very well thought out. It's even got tire pressure monitors, oil temperature as well. I've also got oil temperature on this. Pushing this forward, I've configured some favourites and I've got oil temperature as one of them. Oil temperature is critical. I don't really care what my water temperature is doing. What I care about is my oil temperature. That's the important one. I don't know why manufacturers are obsessed with 
water temperature on their bikes. Give us an oil temperature gauge, that's what matters. And on a Super Duke, you've got one. So there we go, the blooming Super Duke. I'm back on it again, and now I want one. Now I want a Super Duke again. Every time I ride this bike, I want one. I wanted an SMT. I really wanted an SMT, and I thought, I was really close to getting one, and then I thought, hang on. The Hyper Motard will be going back together very soon. Let's not rush in and buy any new bikes until we got the Hyper running and see what that's like. You know, with all the ported head and all the other work I've had done to it. So the Hyper could scratch my naked bike itch. I've just got an itch for a new bike. I am just fancy something new. So I thought, wait until the Hyper's done. You know, if you do the Hyper and you think, yeah, it's all right, then, then think about purchasing a new machine. And I was all geared up for the SMT until I rode this again. I rode this again and was like, oh, the Super Duke. Where have you been all my life? And I thought, you know, I'm not getting any younger. Sports bikes are getting more tricky to be comfortable on. Even on track, a sports bike is quite hard work to ride a sports bike on track. When you're a big, fat, 20 stone, unfit fatty, a 51 year old fatty, it's quite hard on the sports bike to, to be quick because it's, it's hard work. You know, after two laps on it, I get knackered. But I think a naked on track, it's a lot less demanding on your body. And I think one of these with a few mods, it could be my track bike, it could be my road bike. Anyway, there we are. That is it. It's just only a relatively quick video because <laughs> I've said everything about this bike before in the past. So, you know, there's nothing new for me to mention on this machine. But what I can tell you is it's still fantastic. Even though the other bikes have had new models, you know, and this, you could say this is now a little bit long in the tooth. I think it's three years old, this bike. It's still fantastic. It's still up there as one of my all time favorite nakeds. I've actually lined up the MT-10 SP from Yamaha. So I've got the MT-10 SP coming and I've got the Super Duke Evo. And me and Greg are gonna do a comparison between the MT-10 SP and the Super Duke Evo. And we'll let you know which one we think is best because that's another bike I really loved. I really loved the MT-10 when we did the comparison before. So the SP is gonna have electronic suspension. The Evo's got electronic suspension. With the money off the Evo, it's actually slightly cheaper than the MT-10 SP at the moment. So it'll be a really good comparison that. So that's gonna be next month. So keep your eyes peeled. So if you're interested in the MT-10 SP, the Super Duke Evo, you need to press that subscribe button and look out for that video. Okay guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.